Banana slugs are not fast eaters. They really do like to take their time. But when they are done, they'll continue on their way, always with their senses primed for the next edible object. A slug's eyes are quite simple. Each eye is merely composed of a very basic retina and lens that allow the slug to judge motion and changes in light level. And below the eyes lie a pair of sensory tentacles that facilitate the smelling and tasting requirements. But these body parts only fulfill half of the job. These guys still need a way to get around and find their food. Thus, the foot. This incredible mollusk appendage includes a sole whose muscles expand and contract to move the slug's body in a forward motion. This continual action is revealed as a set of waves running from the back of the animal on the bottom of the sole. The slug also generates a continual supply of mucus that is laid down by the sole as a smooth barrier between the slug and the forest floor. And there you go! They're able to fully fulfill their appetites with plenty of day to spare. So, what do they do with the rest of their time? Well, the only time that banana slugs break with such a solitary existence is when they sense a need to mate. Now, slugs are hermaphroditic, meaning they both possess male and female sex organs. These two are common garden slugs, they're not banana slugs. You can clearly see the two penises each of them possesses. Now they circle each other for several minutes, and the actual copulation only took a couple minutes, if that. With our local Santa Cruz species, Dolicophallus, this reproduction process becomes a bit more bizarre. After sometimes several hours of pre-mating ritual by the two slugs, they both insert their penis in the other's body. After depositing the sperm, the animals begin to retract these elongated organs. Sometimes, one or both of the animals appears to be unable to retract the penis. At this point, the slugs often resort to chewing off the organ completely. It used to be thought that the length of these animals' penises caused them to get tangled inside the body of the other slug, thus requiring that it be severed so the slugs could separate. But it is now known that it probably occurs because a single slug is trying to increase its own reproductive chances. With a chewed off penis, the mutilated slug will be unable to deposit sperm in future matings. It will thus be forced to act as a female, merely receiving sperm. By chewing off mates' penises, the slug will be able to increase the density of females in its own vicinity, and thus give its own sperm a very great advantage. The redwood forest has a different feel at night. It reveals animals that aren't as likely to be seen during daylight hours. Banana slugs are more or less split between these two groups. Unlike most slugs and snails, banana slugs are diurnal, functioning both during the day and at night. Both day and night can be very dangerous times for banana slugs. Any number of forest animals may prey on them. While this list is quite expansive, it's very important to note that none of these animals are major predators of the slugs. This slug has lost a tentacle. Likely the victim of an animal attack, this slug is still very lucky to be alive. Unfortunately, the tentacle probably will not regenerate. During the daytime, it's easy to notice that slugs have quite a brilliant color scheme. Their appearance is a vibrant warning to any animal that they may be distasteful to eat. And even if a predator is hungry enough to deal with a distasteful slug, they also have to work around its slime. When in danger, these slugs can exude an extra thick mucus. It's whitish, and it's incredibly sticky. And this can help make trying to swallow them a very unexpected chore for any attacker. So, if you find yourself walking down some trail through the redwoods, and it's not too hot, and preferably not too dry, look around on the path. 
have a pretty good chance of finding a banana slug.